Welcome to Louie Mountain, home of the Dahong Mother plant. Wooly has so many cultivars. You think you can drink them all, but you can't. Well, this is it. I've drunk the tea. I love it. And now I'm here. <laughs> We've just arrived at a, a temple. We're going to have a quick look here and then I'm going to see the Da Hong Pao mother tree. So I'm going to show you around here a bit. It's pretty awesome. You've got this super happy Buddha here and then this grouchy guy over here. Both of them, pretty grouchy. Really beautiful here. Really happy. Oh, we got a rock and roll guitar. That's why it's called Rock Tea. Because you got this rock star right here. Look at him. What a face. He's having a good time. Yeah, hit it, buddy. Drummer's over there with the stick. And here we go into the temple. I'm going to just turn off the camera for a bit. I'm not sure about the video policy in the temple. So just looking up at the sheer face of this cliff, and you can see that this is a great environment to grow anything even on the cliff every possible surface that can sustain life is growing some sort of vegetation all right so now we're gonna head down this trail we're at it we were at another trailhead about 7.8 kilometers according to the sign so we're gonna do that instead and see where that leads us away we go i don't know if you can see off into the distance but we got lots of steps here the trail's rated as a four-star difficulty level, so we'll find out what that means exactly. Here we go. making the ascent here probably gonna do this up and down a few times we literally just started so we just got to the top of a big set of stairs and behind me there's this gorgeous tea garden we're gonna carry on as we keep going uh, looks like we're going up for a bit more so we haven't stopped climbing since we started and we're, I think we're going to pass a lot of tea gardens along the way. All right. We finally hit a crest, a summit here. It looks really beautiful. Tea gardens all around and uh, a wonderful view. We didn't come that far, probably only 800 meters a kilometer at best. But the view is spectacular. I'm going to flip you around show you. Just look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That was worth the uh, large number of steps we just went up. You can see I'm a little winded. Look at all the tea, temple, beautiful. So the first summit we hit was Mataoyan. It is the place for Rogue This is the terroir where it all comes from. It's just beautiful here. Just about every step of this of this uh, trail is stunningly beautiful. Gotta watch my step. The air is super fresh. And we're just trying to figure out where we're gonna go. The trail is probably a little too long for us to finish. Uh, we didn't know we would be hiking eight kilometers, so we don't have water. And it's, a, it's an aggressive hike. It's gonna be at least as hard as Angel's Landing, so. But just look at this, look at this. This is just a few hundred meters from the first stopping point. There's the Mataoyan Garden again. 
Give you a feel for the, how the environment changes here. We were in the open a while ago. Now I'm completely enshrouded by trees. The air is much cooler suddenly. There's this a fragrance of bamboo and stuff in the air. It's just really beautiful. Here's another interesting sort of thing. I'm half covered. I've got tea garden on my left and uh, sort of still enshrouded by trees overhead. Still very cool thanks to the uh, shade and the probably the breath of the trees. <laughs> anyway, this is just really fun. We're going to head to the next the next dot on the map. We found a map along the way, the one that we probably showed you earlier in this video. And we're going to a very famous uh, brook. I think it's called uh, Wuyuan. Wuyuan Jian or Wuyuan Brooklet is the way it's labeled on the map. So uh, that's where we're headed. It's not too far. It's about a, if the map's to scale, it looks like it's just a little bit further than we've come so far. And uh, don't laugh out loud. I think we've only come about 800 meters to a kilometer. And that may be a overestimation because it was strenuous. Look at this. Look at to my right here. It's just awesome here. I didn't notice the uh, the ruins there under the mountain face. And also some garden renewal, some new tea plants here. So we've stopped to ask a few questions. There's actually a manned outpost here and we're just having a chat with the uh, with the uh, fellow who works here, right behind me there. And there's some other hikers. All right, so we've come to the end of the road. One of the tricky parts about having the local connection is they, uh, they can just come here whenever they want because they uh, actually have a garden here. But uh, unfortunately, that's be they also didn't know that we'd need a ticket to uh, get into the main park and to get in here. So we're going to head back. It's been absolutely spectacular regardless. And look, look who's behind me. Little dude. Can you see him? What's your name, buddy? What's your name, buddy? You want to come over here? Not at all. Oh, look at that tongue. Look at that tongue. Are you the uh, Matao Yen dog? Oh, how majestic. Temple dog. So we've been at this outpost for a while. I think the ladies are having tea while I was shooting footage in the brook. Oh, sure, sure. That's China. So I thought we would only be at this outpost for a few moments. But now the ladies are having a chat with the uh, workers here and they, uh, they're they having tea and everything right here in the outpost. Unbelievable. That's China. And just look where we are. Outpost was behind me there. And one of these huge cliffs is behind me there. Let's go over here. We've got the brook. I shot some footage of the brook that's down there. It's just beautiful here. And people are just so friendly. Some Russians just walked by, so they started actually at Tianyo. They've come nearly the full eight kilometers. They said it was a great hike, great weather. We're looking forward to doing some more hiking tomorrow. Awesome. So in another interesting development... Come here, come here. Come here with me in the video. No? Look, come here. All right, in another interesting development, Power of Tea. The Power of Tea has got us some tickets to go on to uh, check out uh, Wuyuan Brook, and then we're going to see the Dahong Pao Mother Tree. All right, little buddy. All right, we got tickets, and we're on our way. Who knew that that would be possible? That is the Power of Tea. Oh, listen to the brook. The, wa the air smells cleaner with this moving water so nearby. I mean, it's already really fresh air here. But if you've been around moving water, you know what I mean by that beautiful, fresh smell in the air. Whoa, look at the tea in there. I almost didn't notice it right through the valley. Got to keep up with the ladies. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit wonderstruck. Yes, it is. Look at how clear the water is. Beautiful. Yes. 
And the smell, you can smell moving water nearby. It's so fresh. I'm gonna see the Dahang Pao tree. So I want to explain something. For those of you that have been here or are going to come here, Wu Yuan Brooklet is the English translation of Wu Yuan Jian. But there's a little bit more to it than that. I'm going to show you what's going on around here. This brooklet runs down this valley in a, in a V-shaped valley surrounded by rock. So in Chinese, that is Jian. It's not just any small brook, which is kind of what we might have thought based on the English translation. You see that wall? And the brook runs right in this slot, like sort of a, it's not a, quite a slot canyon, or maybe it is technically, just the ones I've seen have no vegetation. This one's full. But uh, yeah, this it's a brook running down a, a canyon like this. Oh, look at this bridge. Look at this. Look at this little cute bridge they're on. The brook runs right under there. They're up here. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Oh, here's the definition of Jian. That's that right, is that's what, what I mean. And it is definitely a slot canyon, even though it's really humid here. Look at the wild grasses and plants. Lilies, wild lilies. Oh, wow. And the brook runs right down this canyon. This, no wonder it's so famous. And under this cute little bridge, all right, we're gonna just walk through the canyon now. Now it smells instead of forest, it's mossy. You can you can smell the smell of rock and moss. It still has that freshness because of the water, the fast moving water here, and the moss is constantly irrigated by the uh, water dripping down the sides. I'll just show you that if I can. Look at the moss, it's lush. I mean, it's lush. So I'm on the other side of Wu, Wu Yuan Jian. Oh my gosh, Wu Yuan Brook. And uh, it's just beautiful. It's starting to open up here. The canyon's getting a little wider. Not a whole lot, but a little bit wider. You can see it comes down on my right here as I'm facing out as I pass through, headed toward Tianyao, and the walls go straight back up the other side. And of course, tea plants all along the way. All right, we're heading back. We're heading back to the uh, Da Hong Pao gate. Now that we've got our ticket, take you on another walk through this amazing canyon. Bubble. Whoa, what are those about? Some sort of bubbles. Hey, it seems every now and then they're having See this? Not mm. just in the cave where water is strictly dribble on it. Hey, yeah. give me the pension for now. The pot out. Oh wow. Yep. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at that, the sun's come out. This is going to be a great day. It already has been a great day, but it's going to be, it's just getting better and better. Another set of really old 
or re at least really tall and quite old tea bushes here at the at one of the ends of the uh we went brook gorgeous so we're heading back to uh matalian temple there's a little bit of a loop here though so we've taken a different route now we're right in the middle of the tea garden Just Huge bugs. Huge. We don't like bugs, and by we I mean Jen. I'm uh, I'm ambivalent. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, this is breathtaking. Let me tell you about this smell now. It's so different. Um, even than last time I was here. Last time I was here, it was full cloud and humid, so it had the sort of a uh, now I can, you can smell that intense humidity because the sun has come out and everything's drying off. We're in a steamer. We're in a steamer and there's tea with us. So there's a little tea fragrance. It's not enormous like when you're in a processing plant. But it's there and it's wonderful. And up the hill you've got this kind of a view. This is magical. This has been a magical trip for me. Learned a lot, and I've had some great experiences. I hope you guys are enjoying enjoying sh me sharing them and us sharing them. More and more, I hope that you get to experience this yourself someday because it's really uh, it's really awesome. Even if you're a mild tea lover, like you like tea, you like your tea, but you love the outdoors, I would I would compare this trip to something like a Grand Canyon trip. So if you're into nature hikes and just outdoor fun. I think this might be something you would like. I haven't done much of the park, so don't hold me to that, but that's my impression so far. This is another way to administer fertilizer to these old tea bushes. We have roaming fertilizer systems called chicken. I happen to speak chicken fluently. So that's perfect. So now we're on our way to the uh, to the mother the mother tree. We've stopped by a uh, Shui Jin Gui bush. So we're just on our way to the Da Hangpao mother bush and there's a beautiful view of the layers of rocks there. And you can see uh, this is no longer a four star a strenuous hike but it is stunning view. But you can see it's a lot more crowded. It's a lot more uh, pedestrian here. It's more of a tourist attraction rather than adventure hike. Pros and cons, pros and cons, right? The nice thing is it's an easier walk. Uh, the bad thing is it's a lot more crowded but the views are just as stunning. Look at the, look at where these tea plants live. Just layer upon layer of mountain. It's gorgeous. They've got all, all the different cultivars are labeled in here. Uh, Lao Jun Mei, a new one for me. But everybody knows Fo Show. I like the zero people. Every now and then somebody passes who's a hiker and says it's beautiful. Keep going. Another sensation you get when you're in the uh reserve is the sound of dripping water that weeps out of the rock for a long time after it rains sometimes. Uh, so you have running water, you have the fresh smell of green, the tea aroma, the steep rocks, and then every now and then you've got these sort of drips running off of the rock face into a stream. Just a beautiful experience. Sensory overload! So I initially thought this was a prison for people who try to pluck the Da Hong Pao plant, but that's not correct. It's actually where they used to, in old times, they used to process the tea there. And the mother plant 
is over here somewhere. So let's go see if I can't get it in frame and get a little closer. I'm not going to get that close, but we'll get a little bit closer. All right, here we are. We made it to the, uh, where is it? The <laughs> Da Hong Pao here. mother plants, which are right over here. Yeah. Here we are. We climbed up. We had lots of fun. Woo! So we made it. Not as peaceful as the first trail we were on, but it's a beautiful view. A ton of tea history happening right here. And just look at the surroundings. The processing place that I showed you earlier is right over there. Right there, the little prison. It's not a prison. Gardens all around. And it's a pretty huge tourist area, so there's not surprising to see that there's tons of people around. See if I can find my my posse. I found a bit of a better view here uh, to see the mother bush, so it's pretty awesome here. And I'm getting laughed at, so I'm going to sum up pretty quick. But yeah, you can see the bushes there right behind me, the mother plant. It's just awesome. So we're just heading back now after seeing the mother plant of Da Hong Pao. We've taken the other route, the 530 meter route. It follows along this little brook here, and it's just beautiful again, as you can imagine. Stunning. I learned as a foreigner in China, coming from Canada, where there are mm, very few insects that can hurt you, this is a caterpillar. I don't know if you can see him right there. He's right, I'm not going to get anywhere near him, but he's right there on the branch. His head is sort of that orangish dot. If you touch that guy, you will be stinging for a, oh, you'll be stinging for a while. Anyway, he went out of focus, but you get the picture. <laughs> Underneath that flowering tree, there's a bunch of giant bees just goofing around in the flowers that are on the ground. Really big though. I just want to show you how big they are. I, I can't put my hand next to them, but you can see how big they are relative to the flowers. And here's a flower in my hand, so they're as thick as my thumb. Their body is as thick as their thumb. Interesting thing in China that I notice is sometimes the dishes come wrapped, uh, you know, all cleaned and wrapped up. And in some places, like in the south, we would still rinse them with hot water, but I don't think we're going to do that today. But you get to, you get to unwrap your dishes, fresh and clean. So it turns out we are going to rinse it. It's not water. It's some sort of bean juice, which is apparently even better. Tea, it's not bean juice. It's what? Tea. Oh, it's tea. Don't That's what I mean by uh, antibacteria. It's not the Hong Pao, don't worry. So we just give everything a rinse. And uh, that's about it. We pour the little bowl in the big bowl. It's just like rinsing teaware, except that you've got them nested, which makes things a little bit more complicated. Not much. Put that in there. Everything's rinsed now. Except this here plate, which I'm not going to rinse. Sometimes I pour the water on the plate, but I'm not going to do that because it's too shallow. This cactus became this dish. <laughs>